In this video I'm going to show how to play for black side in one of the most important lines of the Schliemann Gambit. In this game I was playing with the black pieces and my opponent was Grandmaster Pablo Riccardi. Um, the game was played on the Internet Chess Club with the time control of 5 minutes per game and um, if we go through the starting moves we arrive at the spawn structure where black has the minority on the king side and um, white has uh, free development for his pieces and um, he continued with knight to c3 black played pawn to d6 and white starts to exert the exert the pressure on uh, the black knight on f6. For now black castles and after knight d5 we see what this pressure is all about. Black played king to h8 uh, this move is useful both to um, remove the king from the the pressure along the light squares along this diagonal but also to potentially free up the rook um, um, to go to g8 and we'll see why this is helpful. After white played pawn to c3 black played bishop to e6 um, so here we'll see um, some typical plans for both sides and after white exchanged on f6 and uh, black played uh, and white played bishop to h4 we see this typical pawn structure and here there are several plans which uh, black managed to implement in this game um, the first one is the transfer of the knight from c6 to g6 and it's, it started on the following move um, white plays this uh, move pawn to a4 intending to grab the space on the queen side um, black continues with this maneuver uh, so that's the first part of his plan the transfer of the knight to g6 then um, to illustrate the ideas of white here it's important to notice that if white goes pawn to b4 then with the a6 move uh, black manages to free up an escape square for his bishop and this bishop on c5 does not get lost so after bishop to g3, a6 is played on time and now black begins the second part of his plan here which is to play on the g file so after this exchange on f6 um, the g file has opened up for black and he has uh, an aggressive plan of exerting the pressure uh, along the g file in particular on the g2 square white went king to h1 anticipating that there's going to be that, that that pressure uh, and black goes rook to g8 so this position illustrates uh, a couple of other things um, one is that um, black's play here is very intuitive and uh, even though his pawn structure is very solid his piece play is also very natural and his bishops are both active and uh, it is clear what to do for black. For white on the other hand it's not so clear what to do and um, the bishop on h4 doesn't really have much of a purpose and in fact it becomes a target. Um, it's not clear where the white rooks should be as well um, whereas for black it's pretty clear that the rooks belong on the king side. So after bishop to g3 uh, black placed the He's placing the second rook uh, on the king side as well, and this this plan with f4 is all good, but it doesn't really uh, lead to anything. And here we see the third part of Black's plan: um, it is to advance the h pawn and to open some files on the king side, where Black has his active play. Um, what would happen if White had taken the pawn and I want to emphasize that in the blitz game it's um, 
very very useful to sacrifice material in order to uh, gain the initiative and and even if, even if especially if you're playing a stronger player this is a good strategy because um, it it puts the psychological pressure on the grandmaster on the stronger player um, they don't want to have to defend against the lower rated opponent and um, instead of grinding you down in a slightly better position which is their favorite type of play they have to play careful defensive moves and uh, even if the position is okay for white here one slip would be very uh, dangerous so to illustrate uh, here the idea is that if the bishop retreats then the pin along the h file would lead to the demise of the bishop similar to the game um, and already there's a threat of uh, rook to g5, g5 attacking the bishop if for example white goes like this then rook to g5 and this play on the h file is not in white's favor it's in black's favor for example something like this so white first played bishop here and now the pawn advances it is forcing white to capture it he took and now similar idea just to put the pressure along the h file as well not only on the g file but also on the h file um, this seems like a very helpful move both defending the bishop and also um, attacking the the black bishop just a annoying attacking move white goes here so now the bishop on d2 is hanging and so is the bishop on h4 but it's not a worthy trade here and black instead goes bishop to f4 attacking h2 and um, and now it's only the bishop on h4 that is hanging and he it actually doesn't have a very good square um, in the game white played um, this move trying to block the diagonal against h2 and also defend the bishop a very natural move but in sharp positions, especially in a slightly odd line like the Schliemann, natural moves don't always work. And here the natural sacrifice uh, on g3 opens up the h-file for um, for black. And the g-file is also open. Because of the pin, white is unable to take on g3. So after rook to... sorry, after queen to h2, the only move to defend along the h-file then comes rook to h3 and the game is practically over because black is winning the queen um, because it's a blitz game of course white continues some resistance but it really um, leads to nothing eventually um, the queen is going to be captured there's even no hurry for black to capture the queen and after a few more moves uh, it became clear that without the uh, without the queen, uh, it's impossible for white to, to put up any kind of resistance. And to make things worse, because white was facing such a difficult uh, task in this game, he was also lower on time, so he also lost on time in this completely lost position. So, to highlight again, uh, th the game illustrates the typical plans for black in this variation of the Schliemann. Um, in the Spanish opening, it um, um, shows that uh, the pressure on f6 that white puts um, can actually backfire and after the opening of the g file, after this exchange, uh, it is black who starts to put the pressure on the king side and uh, even a strong player may sometimes not find a good plan in this position basically white didn't really have any plan the only active move he played here was f4 but that really led to nothing because um, the rook had to leave the uh, the king side and then it was all black who was attacking on the on the king side so i hope this was useful and this um, might encourage you to try the schliemann uh, in your own games as well